Hi, and thank you so much for um, stopping in watching this video. Today's video is all about hummingbirds. It is going to be spring migration here in the eastern United States, the United States all together, and it's already actually starting in some places. So here in Indiana, um, I am waiting for the ruby-throated hummingbird. actually probably going to show up here in the next couple of weeks but today's video is going to be about what to prepare for them as far as feeders uh, what to feed them what not to feed them and why you shouldn't feed certain types of food to them um, and so what I have here today at the picnic table in the backyard is a little bit of the setup that I use to feed the hummingbirds and I have a hummingbird feeder. It's actually not even red color. It's kind of purpley pink, but they still are very much attracted to it. And then what I'm gonna show you right now is how to fill up your hummingbird feeder with what we call sugar water. Now, sugar water is just water from your cap, from your sink. And what I recommend is using um, a 16 ounce glass of hot water and then a coffee mug size cup full of white sugar. Sugar that's like that. If you can see that. And then what I do is I go ahead and pour the sugar into the water and it's hot water so it can dissolve the um, sugar a little bit easier. You can stir it a little bit easier. And then once I get that done, I take a spoon and then I just stir it in really good. And then I'm going to pour it into the hummingbird feeder. And then once I am done with that, I'm going to fill it up with cooler water and I'm going to take a spoon or a some kind of spatula or something and mix it up a little bit more. And then I know it shows really cloudy in here at this moment, but it will clear up and it'll just look like water. And then if you spill any, I just recommend uh, wiping it down getting all that sweetness off the outside of the feeder. And then um, once you do that, you hang it up on your shepherd's hook, which I'll show you here in just a second. Okay, so I had to go get some more water, but I'm just gonna show you that I have another glass of water and that 
I have the mix that I had already put in here with the sugar. I'm just gonna continue to fill this up with water. And now, normally I'd fill it up until it's up to the top, so just a little bit more. But today I'm just gonna show you the next part of what I do, which is really simple. Just make sure the lid's on tight. Make sure the bottom isn't linking and it's not linking, so that's good. And then I use a old wire uh, hanger, clothes hanger, and a shepherd hook to hang it up. Now I'll go ahead and take you over to where I hang this up at. It's right next to some of my other bird feeders that I have. And uh, here it is. So this is the hook, shepherd's hook that I hang this on. And I just twist it. A couple of times. And there you go and they will totally and absolutely come to this when they get here and I can't wait because I love ruby threaded hummingbirds of the actual food that I want to recommend not using and not feeding to your hummingbirds now what I'm talking about is the food that is colored red so anything that you see at your local farm store like Royal King or even Walmart that's dyed red that they say are, is made for hummingbirds you I recommend not using that and the reasons are because it has chemicals and dye that can cause your hummingbirds to get sick and to die and obviously we do not want any bird to fall ill because of our um, possible lack of knowledge or just you know not knowing that you're not supposed to feed them something that is like this and the chemicals are not in the nutrients and stuff like that that are added to this dyed food either the liquid form of it or the powdered form of it is the same thing um, it's not their natural food source, obviously. And yes, sugar water is also not their natural source of food. However, it does mimic the natural food they get from the flowers that they get nectar from the closest. And also sugar water is just water, which they drink in their natural habitat and sugar, which is the closest thing that they have to the nectar that they feed off of. Um, so it is safer as long as you're not feeding them with too high a level of sugar and you're not feeding them l less than what they need to sustain their energy, then you're all good and set to go. All right, so I'm in the room and on my computer, and this is just one example of the red dye colored food that we have on the market at different stores. Um, this is something that I don't recommend feeding the hummingbirds. It's not good for them. Can make them sick, can make them die. In some instances, um, they sometimes add what they call like, uh, substitute nutrients and additives and things like that to this red dyed food and it's just not nutritionally healthy or beneficial to feed to the hummingbirds. Now this is the liquid form and there's tons of different brands and different shaped bottles and containers that will look similar to this um, and I just personally do not recommend it. And I'll show you a couple other examples. They have like um, 
the orange colored for the Orioles. That's probably just as bad for the Orioles as it did as the red dye is for the hummingbirds. So I would probably not recommend that either. Um, and so yeah, there's different sizes and different types of containers, but it's a concentrate and it's just, you know, I don't recommend it. And um, there's also powdered kind. So if I go over here and I type in um, powdered, There's one that's on Amazon and it's a little powdered box, has Audubon Park on it, um, and yeah, I just, I wouldn't recommend feeding hummingbirds these products and these types of foods. Just your regular sugar water, like I showed you earlier in the video, is, is the best way to go. Now, as at this moment, we don't have any hummingbirds here, but in a couple weeks we are going to, and I am very excited for that. So if you are in the Eastern United States or in the United States and you know, and you keep track of when like certain birds are gonna be in your area, um, you can definitely do that on eBird and different um, websites for keeping watch on the migration and um, yeah, that's definitely something um, I would recommend if you want to know when they're coming to your area. Um, for mine, it's usually in the middle to late April, and then they really come in at the very first week of May. Um, but as far as this video goes, I am done. And if you like it and you want to see more content, please hit that subscribe button and notification bell and like button so you don't miss out on any more of my any future content